So the use of balancing, uh, enhancing uh, tools. Yes. Yeah. I remember uh, when I did an article in Strength and Health, and uh, no, it was for muscle development, and uh, it was, I showed Karen doing uh, her squats on a balance board, and uh, John Gremick said to me, he says, you know, don't do those anymore. He says, people don't understand that stuff, you know, proprioceptive neuromotor. He says, no, it's too much. <laughs> 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 so that was my attempt to get some of that into, into this thing. You know, now uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm also interested in music. You know, you look at the idea of attack, you know, this, this idea, everything in the magazines now is attack and hurrah, Well, it's cortisol, you know, and that's adrenaline. And your body, from the Cellier concept, and John, you and I for years have been talking about Hans Cellier, the general adaptive syndrome mm -hmm. and fight or flight. And all those things now are becoming issues where people are seeing their lives are being run by symbolic dinosaurs and weird things. And here's a bodybuilder. His major mission is to stimulate the muscle, to get the growth by getting more and more fibers, deeper and deeper, recruiting more and more fibers, educating them, neuralimization of the fibers so that these, the conduction rates are faster and, and stronger and all those things that go into it. Um, that idea is where I'm at today, you know, it's the same. Well, I know I, I get your, your your newsletter, and of course you're you're always talking about uh, too much stimuli. The bodybuilders should try to rejuvenate, you know, cool out, listen to Mozart, or you know they have all these vibe musics here. You can you can put on and tranquilize yourself and do your kundalinis and all that stuff or whatever. But the whole point of it is to relax. I learned that stuff when I was just a young bodybuilder from this guy, uh, Dr. Burkhart. He used to give me tapes. It was like Aldous Huxley, you know, Doors of Perception. You listen to the tapes, you want vocabulary, you go to sleep with vocabulary. Everything you do is, is constantly boom, 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 putting it in. Now you got the left ear, the right ear, you got the right brain, the left brain. You got all this f fun stuff to talk about. Yeah, I know one of the really, uh, you, you were go going against the tide, and I bet you, bet you with the pro teams. Um, with your theories on stretching and on range and range of motion nonsense, yeah. and range of motion, you take, if t you take the human knee. Okay, what is its movement? Okay, here's the knee. It's locked. All right. How far does it go? Okay, this is from uh, university stuff. It goes 135 degrees before it dislocates. I remember Clyde Emmerich talking about when they were trying to do those uh, uh, scuba uh, knees. You know, you put the scuba suit on. And, he, and it balls up when you do the squat, so you yeah. get a bounce off of it. But what it was doing is gapping the knee more, right. so the knee opened more. Knee. Yeah. Uh, so you look at even even in terms of suits and stuff. You know, guys were doing uh, squats with their Levi's on. Now they go with suits. <laughs> it takes you two hours to get in and out of the thing. But in any event, it, it's a different uh, different world in that respect. Yeah. Well, I think what you really pointed out that that stretching has its uses but it but it should be limited well, to your personal point, range your own personal of range of any, motion yeah, end point of any movement uh, is is limited where the strain's going to occur if you're doing the fly everybody knows when the guy's got s marks running across his skin that he has gone where the fascia is also ruptured all right and so that there is a problem in that when they finally tear it remember fascia is what the physician sews together Fascia is what holds the spaghetti fibers of muscles as they slide back and forth. If those fascias are lubricated, that's why we warm up where Jones went wrong. You know, you have to warm up the fascias. That's why. And that fluid, it's not just blood getting there. It's blood getting out. That's where the PHA comes in. But what I missed at that point was the lymphatic flow, the drag, the, the inch that stays in the arm an hour or two after is still lymphatic. The it's the lymphatic fluid. That's connective tissue. Steinhaus said there's no limit to how much connective tissue you can develop. Okay? That's the pumper. The strengthener is the guy who's recruiting fibers. I've always preferred that uh, rationale for training. Yeah. Recruit, rest, recruit, you know, reset relax. All those things have to go into the development. I think that, you know, Arthur Jones, of course, created an industry, number one. No number, number two, he expanded the number of people that would go into a gym because the barbell, in fact, does look crude, but as Vince said, isn't. And the machines don't look like a barbell. Uh, and, and, you, and they're, quote, easier to use because you don't have to think. 
uh, but the at the other end, uh, to, to me, his lasting uh, co contribution was really bringing the for, the for, to the forefront the uh, the idea of overtraining and the idea of rest and recuperation and the and the amount of time that it takes to do this. He was the I think one of the first people to really talk about. Um, about overtraining. Well, like Joe Weider too. He was he was uh, great with vocabulary. He developed terms: omnidirectional, one directional. Yeah, I, I agree. So bidirectional. Yeah, kind of yeah. And then he got into eccentrics, and then took that to a a, a level. Yeah. Um, I think I think anything that's called anybody knows any stories. You, we can do a whole article on what we remember about Arthur Jones with the mm -hmm. alligators and the mm -hmm. guys getting their heads cut off and all that, and uh, who invented the machine? It was Clark and all this other stuff over the years. Uh, uh, it's, it was an amazing period, you know. And right, was, an amazing. When I went into that first business, we had uh, the Nautilus machines, the whole deal, and I, I saw two. Uh, young guys dislocate their shoulder blades. <laughs> boom, boom! They went that pullover. It was yeah, well, especially if you had any momentum you, and you would over totally, overstretch. It put the guy on the rack. Besides, you know, when you're going on your eccentric. You stand on the rack. So if you had the total weight stack was what 240 or whatever, then another guy's uh, uh, 180 pounds <laughs> standing on it going down. Uh, but those were originally, uh, I don't know, Bill, you've got probably a memory of, of uh, a guy trying to think of his name right now. He used to write for Weeder, and he was the guy that came up with the reason the bench presses were going up is because the guys are practicing downs. And uh, I'm trying to remember his name. Barton Horvath, I think, was the guy that started mm -hmm. that. So, you, you know, obviously, you know, both of us have lived through a tremendous revolution here, and, and a lot of it has been a rediscovering of things we already knew and, and getting into the mainstream. Where, where is, you know, your field now? You have two clinics, and you're basically dealing with an aging population and athletes. Yeah, the boomers are coming out with uh, joint ache and all this stuff. It's an interesting uh, uh, time. You know, like you look at a young man, who goes into the into his 30s and 40s now? Just the, the, the public. Now I'm not talking about bodybuilders or yeah. ideals. I mean, what's this guy got? He's got beer. He's got weekend football with his buddies. I mean, that's like the lineup coming to my clinics. <laughs> 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 and then to try to educate <laughs> that you know, if you're gonna play football and you're gonna be get get drunk and you're gonna dive over the fence and you know you're gonna you're fracture, gonna pay, you're gonna pay for all this stuff or, or uh, all of these uh, these kinds of things. And that's that's the American way. If you mm -hmm. watch the commercials now, they're very disturbing to me because it's just constant pounding on guys getting together and acting stupid. <laughs> It's, it's like know, we it's, it's like we wouldn't act stupid enough on our own. We needed an encouragement. Coffee, we'd all sit around, you know, and discuss what the intellectual properties of uh, caffeine were. In terms of alcohol, what are you going to discuss? Well, as as, as as usual, <laughs> talking to you, Bob, is always an adventure, and I always learn something. And um, you've been on the the cutting edge and continue to. One of the main things is to me is you've really spent your life helping people. You know, you've been involved all the way from, as I say, when I met you at the Division Street Y, you were in the people business, and and you took great pleasure in transferring your wonderful knowledge to people. And and I don't know how many lives you've quote improved, but I'm sure there's countless. Congratulations. Well, bless you for your comments. <laughs> Good to talk to you, Bob.